<laughs> Guys in the Gulf. Well, it's been a few weeks, mate. We have uh, we've missed a few a few Fridays on the podcast. I don't even don't even know what day we'll put this up. What day I don't even know what day it is. It's Tuesday. <laughs> I might get it done before Friday, but we'll see. Yeah, well, we've obviously had a, <laughs> a busy few weeks. It's been it's been crazy. If we sound a bit deflated, it's uh, it's because we are. All lies, mate. All lies. <laughs> We're ready and raring to go. Absolutely. Couldn't, doesn't get much better than this, does it? No. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, last time we caught up with you, mate, you were out, uh, uh, you were still in Vegas on the last podcast. Yeah, yeah, I zoomed in, yep. Yeah, so we had that one and then since then a, a lot has happened. Yeah, yeah, so um, obviously that's why we haven't had one out for a couple of weeks now, so um, unfortunately. Yeah, we just finished Cyclone Lincoln and then not bloody three weeks later, Megan the bitch, she comes along <laughs> and... Um, yeah, she didn't cause too much of a fuss in terms of uh, in terms of the wind. Like it did get windy, but yeah, not much damage around here other than trees down. But uh, yeah, she she didn't clean up after herself. She left a whole heap of bloody rain. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, yeah, plenty of rain. Uh, probably the biggest flood I've what well, is the biggest flood I've seen here. So um, in you know a bit over twenty years now. So so yeah, it was. Uh, Bit wild. Yeah. King Ash Bay uh, pretty much went completely underwater. I think yeah. there's only a handful of places that didn't get water through them at all. Um, yeah. So luckily, what, how, was, how many houses? We got like 50 houses here. Oh, more than that, I reckon. Yeah. More, but, yeah. Um, and and almost all of them had had water damage from flooding. Yeah, ranging from sort of yeah 50, 100 mil to like your place. Yeah, the, over a meter. Yeah, the place I stay in. Yeah, it's yeah over a meter deep there. So it's amazing. How you wouldn't think that uh, fridges and freezers and washing machines would float. But they do, even if you've got stuff stored on top of them. Yeah, the water comes up, <laughs> over they go. So I think I might even have a little bit of footage for you of, um, who was it, um, Pricey and Damo went through my shack just straight after the floodwaters had, had re recited, re receded, sorry. Mm. And, um, yeah, got a little bit of footage there for you. You can see what, <laughs> what was met, met with there, what they were met with. And, yeah, it's not... Not the nicest sort of scenes to see of all your possessions and that all been floating around in the mud and yeah, no, it's not not good at all, mate. Um, like I say, yeah, most most people bloody have water in their houses. Um, a lot of people here no insurance. Yeah. Some some people you know retired or at least semi retired and lost all their worldly possessions and and stuff. So it's been a pretty rough week for a lot of people. But uh, you know we'll we'll uh, clean it up and get back to it and yeah. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully get back to normal in the not too distant future. That's why I say to everyone. Everyone says, "Oh, how are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, it could be worse." Yeah, yeah. Well, things, things can only get better from here. That's it. You've got your health, mate. Well, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> mostly. <coughs> so, uh, so yeah, yeah. Kind of. so yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in uh, Vegas for the last last episode from Vegas. I came back to Australia. I did a couple of things. Uh, went to uh, Melbourne. Flew flew back into Melbourne. Caught up with Big Pete from here. Yeah, and cool. uh, met his sister. Went out for dinner, mate. Uh, yeah, the, uh, top show down there. And then a uh, couple of days in Sydney. Uh, went and saw Theo Vaughn and um, uh, Chris Young, uh, which was really good. And then uh, flew back up to Brisbane. Oh, but what you, there was one other thing, fishing related. You went to the oh, Sydney yeah, fish yeah. market, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, went to the, uh, yeah, the, the uh, fish market there in Sydney. Yeah, did a tour there. Yeah, the, uh, so, so early. You, you pay for and, and they yeah. take you through as a group. Yeah, yeah. No, tell was, tell uh, us about that. Yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, it was very early though and it was the morning after going to Theo Vaughn. So I went and saw Theo Vaughn in uh, Sydney, then went to the casino in Sydney and then... Uh, <laughs> you did so. <laughs> got back to the hotel and then uh, had a couple of hours sleep and then uh, got an Uber down to the Sydney Fish Market, did a tour there. That was quite interesting, mate, uh, seeing how the auction floor works and everything like that. Yeah, it was really so it's good. quite behind the scenes. You get to sort of see... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it, was it as big as you thought it would be? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I suppose it was, yeah. It was... Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff going on. I mean, obviously they start really, really early in the morning. I think they, you know, they're in there, you know, before four a.m. sort of thing. Yeah, um, well. You know, well, all everything, all the products there, and then the buyers come in and start auctioning, uh, auctioning off uh, the product, and they do uh, reverse auction. So um, they actually, the, I think the uh, the market sets what they think is the the reasonable price for that day. And then uh, it starts at, say, for example, it's whatever it is. Say it starts at fifty dollars a kilo. Yeah. Uh, they've got a big uh, uh, a big clock on a big screen in front of the like. There's mini stadium sort of mini uh, like grandstand type seating. Oh yeah. And they've got a little computer in the in the desk, and, yep. all, and all the buyers sit there and they see what the price starts at. 
and then basically the first person to hit buy buys it at that price, but the price counts down. Oh, so yeah. I think I think it drops down by. I suppose I the, it, the price just keeps going down until there's none left. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So um, obviously, I think I suppose people people pretty much buy everything, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it basically starts at whatever price they set, and then it drops. I think it's something like a dollar every second or something like that on the clock. Oh wow! On the, they've got like a shot clock up on the on the wall. Yeah. And um, so yeah, for someone who wanted lobster, live lobster or something like that, and they've only they know they've only got a certain, like two ton there today or something. Yeah, yeah. So that, they'll they'll probably buy, buy at a higher price and press the button or whatever they need to do. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a game show. Like. Yeah, pretty much. So and then and then I think yeah and I. I'm not a hundred percent on it, but I think some things they actually do it twice. So they they start at uh, start at what they they think the price is worth. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They start um, at a percentage like it might be ten percent or twenty percent higher than what they think it should sell for, and then the, the clock starts winding back, uh, and the money starts dropping. And then once somebody buys it, then they start running it back the opposite way, and somebody can outbid them then the other way. Yeah. So um. Yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, cool. Uh, it's quite funny. Um, yeah, you could, all, all the fellas out that were buying stuff uh, all blew up there um, for a minute. They were all, all carrying on and making a heap of noise. And I did say to the lady doing the tour there, so what's that about? She goes, oh, obviously they're not happy with the price that the market set. They reckon it's too oh. high. So they're all they're all carrying on about it. So, so yeah, that was <laughs> yeah pretty funny. But, um, no, good show down there. Um, yeah, uh, I wish I was getting paid... Uh, uh, the same kilo rate for mud crabs oh. is what they're selling for, mate. I can tell you that. You much. showed me a photo. Mm. I don't know where, whether that was at a actual seafood shop. That, or that was that was at a shop that was at the yeah. um, at the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Was it a hundred dollars a kilo? Ninety nine. Ninety nine yeah. dollars a kilo. It's yeah. all, but ba- basically a hundred dollars a crab. Mm. Imagine getting that. That'd be all right. Yeah, it'd be be very nice, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but no, it's um, no, it was very interesting to see, mate, how it all works in the on the uh, on the back end of it. So, yeah. um. Yeah, no, it was very interesting. All the different types of fish and, and shellfish and stuff, stuff you've never even heard of or seen before, mate. Yeah, okay. There's plenty of weird and wonderful different things there, so. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally separate topic. I don't think we'll set up like this again. I don't like I keep turning towards you. What, yeah, do, no, what do they do on Alpha Blokes? I feel like they just look forward, even though they're sitting next to each other. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I usually yeah. just listen to it on Spotify. I don't yeah. really watch it. Yeah. So, well, um, I see their videos on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they... Anyway, yeah, I feel like I'm talking to the... It is uh, uh, very uh, like news reportery type thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing whatever, whatever we can. This is our second change of venue today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we're working on it though. We're yeah. going to get something sorted. Yeah, well, but, you can probably see in the from the wall there. So it, it's in late afternoon, and um, yeah, that sun's going to come straight through that window yeah, directly. Right, so yeah. we're going to have perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's no. better than setting up outside like we did at first and yeah. we realised, oh, this is a bit hot. <laughs> bit hot in the sun, shadows yeah. everywhere, um, <laughs> birds and bloody yeah. wind noise and everything yeah. else. So, so uh, yeah, we're actually set up on my pool table at the moment, not that you'd know, but, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, yeah, that was Sydney pretty much, mate. Oh, yeah, I saw Chris Young, that was oh, really oh, good. Yeah, no, Theo was unreal. I want to hear about Theo. Yeah. Oh, it was unreal, man. So, it was, was there unreal. warm-up acts? Was there anyone... Yeah, 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 yeah. People that I I didn't know them. I hadn't yeah. I hadn't hadn't heard them before. But um, were they locals or Americans? Uh, no, there's one Aussie fella. Yeah, yeah cool. and one yeah. American fella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then Theo. But um, like packed, proper yeah. packed. Like yeah. he's, he's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> and it was it was at the very least uh, better than I thought it would be, mate. Like yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, it was it was it was heaps good. Yeah, really yeah. good. Really I don't think I've show. ever been to a live comedy show. No, nah, me neither. I don't reckon. No. Yeah. yeah. No, it was it was really really good show, mate. Yeah, unreal. Like I'd definitely go see him again. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. And cool. it wasn't even expensive, really. And I yeah. had good seats. I was like three or four rows from the front. Yeah. Um. So um. Yeah. Only sort of ten meters from the stage, which is really really good. But um. And like. Man, the seats at the back were looked like a mile away when yeah. you turn around and look back, like it was massive. Yeah. Massive, uh, massive he, thing. I can't remember where it was where it was oh, yeah. that, but down near um not far well, walking distance from the casino, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> He's not known for his crowd work at all, but did, did he do any crowd work? Did he talk to anyone in the crowd? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah not a lot, but yeah. um but it was like obviously um with the size of the the venue, like it would have been yeah, it would have been really, really difficult yeah. to um to get into it too much, but yeah, he did have a yarn with a couple of people, but yeah, cool. yeah, not not a lot though. Yeah, not a lot. But no, it was really good though, mate. I yeah, really really enjoyed it. But he um, yeah, and then uh, the next yeah following morning went to the fish market, did that, went back to my room, had some lunch, went to a pub, had uh, one beer. Service was shit house. 
Um, so went to another bar. <laughs> well, you'd been in America for weeks, yeah. which you've been telling me how good the service is there. Yeah, yeah, you just realise, yeah, yeah. So um, these poor bastards are working for nothing and yeah. just working for tips so that it's in their best interest to provide good service. Pretty much, mate, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think I went to about three different pubs before I found uh, found somewhere with some good service, mate. There's a couple of Irish staff, so uh, that was uh, excellent, mate. So, um, so you speak to him about Romney Brown? <laughs> I spoke to him about coming to work at King Ash Bay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, they were really good. The young Irish couple there working, and um, and they were they were all over it. They were really good. So I ended up sitting there all afternoon um, drinking schooners, which is like that's all it's all you want when you go to a pub. Like I was, I mean, here at King Ash Bay, if you if you finish your drink, you sit your schooner on the bar. Like if we sit at the bar most of the time, you sit your schooner on the bar. You chuck your twenty bucks or fifty bucks or whatever um underneath your underneath your schooner glass or your can or whatever it is you're drinking yeah and as soon as the bar barmaid or bartender's finished you know serving the you know whoever's in front of you they grab you a drink like i waited like half an hour at one yeah. place and the the barmaid walked past like 10 times and i was like bloody hell no nah, get out of here so <laughs> that, i did that a few times mate and then and um, even I, one of my pet hates is like if it's a place where you sit at the bar, just like what, how you're explaining, mm-hmm. and you, like there'll be a bar mat and you put your money under that, even your change, yeah. you, you'll just slide under the bar mat there. And then like they'll literally specify, oh, uh, out of this? I'm like, well, what? I'm not having it there for fun, you know? Like, <laughs> of course out of that. That's that's my drinking money. And like, as a bartender, you should know that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, it was pretty pretty wild, mate, especially after coming back from the States for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. the services, you definitely notice the difference. So, um, yeah, anyway. That was yeah. all good. Um, went to uh, Chris Young that night, yeah, um, and because uh, I only had yeah two nights in Sydney and it was packed, um, jam packed full of stuff to do. Yeah. So uh, went to Chris Young. Didn't that didn't finish until like he was one of the headlines of CMC Rocks, which yeah. I didn't get to go to obviously, even yeah. though I did buy tickets. Um, <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, it was great performance too. That was just out of the city a bit, um, but yeah, really really good performance. I was standing pretty much right at the front. Yeah, um, yeah, buying two drinks at a time and. <laughs> push my way in and um no it was, that was that was a really good turnout you were um, saying to me though that, that people in sydney obviously don't drink much because you were, there was no massive lineups for at the at the concert yeah, you thought you would have thought all there. these buddy and the bar was only the size of king ash bay's bar and there's only about oh, three wow. bar staff or four bar staff yeah and i was like yeah well, i never never lined up for more than 30 seconds so yeah wow so, which well, was good for me and you're saying country it's a country music concert yeah and no the, rum and no rum no rum mate. I, was, I, was, I can't even remember i was, I was drinking Rookies. some some rubbish beer. Didn't even have Great Northern. Uh, <laughs> get your act together, Sydney. Um, no, no, it was it was all right, but um, yeah, I uh, didn't get home till again a couple of you know two a.m. or something like that. Back to my hotel, and then uh, I was up at uh, four thirty to go to the airport to fly to Brisbane. Yeah, flew to Brisbane, uh, got a high car, uh, drove around to um, the guys that are building my Toyota, checked on it, yep. got an update from them. Uh, went up to Brisbane Yamaha, checked can on we, that boat. Can, bo- can yeah. we put a photo up for people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah, Toyota? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. Yep, so it's um, still had a fair bit to do then, but yeah. I think there's uh, most of it's done now. Um, but, yeah, no, it was um, looking pretty good, so that had all pretty well pulled apart. But, um, but no, I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with it. And, um, awesome. Yeah, went from there, went up to Brisbane Yamaha, and they had our, our boat um, yep. ready to go. Well, just about ready to go. They just about to put the engine on it and, and do the wiring, and then it was ready to go, but... Yeah, it was sitting there in the yard on the on the trailer. So, have we spoken about that boat yet? Um, I think we might have touched on it briefly. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we did definitely. We definitely yeah. did. Yep. So, uh, just yeah, another hire boat, another yeah, boat cool. for the lodge to hire out to yeah. uh, customers so, and visitors. Yeah, so this one's a Polycraft. That yeah, you got. yeah, yeah, four and a half meter Polycraft, Chiller steer, Chiller steer, sixty Yamaha. We'll bring up a photo of that as well. That's gonna yeah. be a, that's a game changer for mm. for King Ash Bay for the region. I reckon having a hire boat of that sort of quality. Yeah, that people can just come here and. And hire that. That's going to be unreal. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, mate. It yeah. Looks real nice. So, um, so yeah. So we got that. Uh, got that sorted, and then um, went up and saw um, uh, mum up in uh, the sunny coast. Yeah. And um, I stayed with her for a day, and um, yeah, just mucked around there for a little bit. Um, checked out. She just bought another Airbnb there, right on the beach there in uh, Marcoola. So I checked did see out some out. photos online. It looks very, very snazzy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it was um, fairly sort of basic when I was there. Um, because I think it had just been in like the rental pool for the hotel or whatever. Okay. So, um, so yeah, but she's had it all painted and, and done it all up and, you know. New furniture and everything. Yeah, yeah. everything's pretty much brand new now. So that looks really good. And then, yeah, uh, I was on the phone pretty well flat out looking at keeping track of the weather up here. Yeah. Um, we pulled the pin on the fishing comp for Easter weekend because yeah. it's just the road had already been closed several times and looked like we are going to get a heap of rain. So we, we all... all, all 
already sort of um, had talked about it, but we yeah, pulled the pin on the fishing comp, postponed it. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much that weekend, um, so only, you know, 24 hours after that, 48 hours after that, and, um, I got on a plane and flew back to Darwin. Uh, got to Darwin about 2 a.m., hired a car, and then drove back to Boronoa. Yeah, wow. Um, and by that stage, you couldn't get into King Ash couldn't Bay. Get in, couldn't get back into King Ash Bay, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, and I was a... Yeah, a bit of a bit of a nightmare, really. <laughs> everyone, uh, everyone uh, got evacuated from King Ash Bay, or was yep. asked to evacuate. And yep. um, um, yeah, so Kate and her sister, who's living here with us at the moment, um, they both came into Boralula. Um, majority of people from King Ash Bay went out to Heartbreak and yep. uh, got rooms down there because um, yeah, it was looking pretty wild there for for a minute. Yep. Um, yeah, this is, we're definitely not setting up here again. No. <laughs> Anyway, it is what it is. We'll get through it. It is what it is. Yeah, could be worse. Could be. Could be. <laughs> could be worse. Anyway, we had a few battery issues then, but we're back. And I think you were. To- uh, we'll go back to. You were talking about yeah. So you d- so you've just done all your stuff down south. You've just flown back to Darwin. Yeah, yeah. So I just flew back into Darwin. But you got there at what two a.m. or something. Got, got there at two a.m. Um, got a hotel um, for a couple of hours, and then uh, as soon as the high car open, place opened up, went and hired a Toyota, and then. Um, yeah, drove drove back straight straight through um, back to Boralula. Uh, yeah. And by that stage, you couldn't get into King Ash Bay anymore. Couldn't get into King Ash Bay. No, yeah. the road was already um, flooded, and um, yeah, it was already and belting down with the rain. And yeah, yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty wet. So the river was already coming up then by that stage, and uh, cyclone was pr- getting pretty close. So um, yeah, it started moving so slow. But when it get co- got closer, I've never seen one yeah. go that slow. It took days before we could work out what was actually going to happen. Yeah. And although the uh, the forecasting for it was pretty bloody good, I've never seen one predicted as accurate as that. Yeah, usually in the Gulf they just bounce around, bounce around everywhere, yep. and no one really knows what's going to happen until it happens. But this one, the predictions were out for like a week, pretty much. That I mean, they changed by maybe 150, 200 k's, but that's in the scheme of things, like it's 300 kilometers wide. That's so, right. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty, still pretty close. Yeah, so, I reckon if does it, so, it missed us to the uh, east. Yeah. But if it was just oh, 50 kilometres closer, I, th- I feel like we would have had a lot of damage here. Oh, it, w- sure. it wouldn't have taken much to get, like, a, it only needed to be a tiny bit closer to us and yeah. we would have got a lot of damage here. Yeah. Yeah, well, they were clocking like 190k an hour winds um, on the satellite. I think uh, yeah. the weather station clocked out at 170, I think, at Centre Island. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I don't, we don't have any photos or anything, but I know Brett's been out to Weeby, yep. which is at North Island there. So yep. that would have, that would have definitely caught copped it there yeah and um he's he's sort of had fairly minor damage there so yeah he's he's pretty happy with that yeah he's pretty lucky though I mean, that, that's um majority of that's been there for a very long time and, yeah. and they've been through plenty of cyclones but because they're sort of tucked in uh, you know in that hill sort of thing yeah right yeah i think they, they most of the wind i reckon just goes over the top of it sort of thing yeah. so well, i think as he was most worried about the shed on the hill on yeah, the top yeah. of the hill yeah which was which survived survived yeah. that's my no, old shed everyone no no drums <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh yeah, got back into Borola. Um, it was just, it was just absolutely, everything was just a mess. It was just so difficult trying to get information. Yeah. Um, no oh, one was yeah. sort of sure what was going on. No phone reception. The, the Telstra had only yeah. been working again for a couple of days then dropped out again, so we had no phone service. So in Borola, no reception at all. At King Ash Bay, some people have patchy reception here, but it's like, even though the tower's coming at some stage, we, we some people do get reception here using different technologies, and, yeah. and that was all out. Yeah. So we had just a couple of random people that had Starlink. Yep. Which were able to just get messages in and out every now and then. Yeah, thanks, Elon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we had Starlink at the at our place in Boralua as well. Yeah. So, um, so every time you're trying to do something, you had to go back to the shop and then uh, you yeah. know make phone calls, send emails, do whatever, and then um, yeah, just yeah, do whatever you could do. So, um, yeah, pretty much Monday morning, um, uh, my old man and Kate and her sister uh, packed up and. Uh, left Boralua to drive to Darwin and um, uh, a few others did as well uh, but by the time they got down the road uh, just out of town about 30 k's out of Boralua the road was cut off there it was yeah, already wow. the water was already up I and mean, I'd, only, I'd only come in late the night before and there was oh. no water at all anywhere there and uh, the next morning yeah, it was flowing across the road you yeah. couldn't get through so um, I do have a couple of screenshots of the uh, the river height markers that, yeah, that, yep. that they show yeah where it shows where it's at the they call it CTF cease to flow so it's basically very close to that at, at the lowest it gets, and then the up it goes within twenty four yep. hours. That that bridge is underwater, like yeah. in Borrelor. It's just incredible. Yeah, the amount massive of amount of water. Yeah, and so that's and so quick. Like yeah. it went from nothing to like unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was crazy. 
Crazy. It was a yeah. It reminded me the very first year we were here back in the um, uh, what was it? Early two thousands, very yeah. early two thousands, two thousand one, two thousand two. I think. Yeah, I reckon um, both those years were big floods. Yeah, and they reminded me of that where where it started raining one one afternoon, and then yeah. by the next morning it was up over the old Rocky Creek Bridge. Yeah. Um, it didn't go as high then as what it did this time though. This time it was yeah, it went so high. But yeah, basically that Monday morning. Um, yeah, uh, my old man Don and um, the girls tried to drive out and got turned back um, at, by the road being cut off. So yep. um, they came back into Borodula. Um By the time they'd got back in, I knew they must be coming back in because I'd been told by uh, one of the guys up at the council office that the road was cut off. So I um, I figured they were, they were coming back in anyway. Um, and basically, yeah, we're waiting at the council office there um, for aircraft to come in to start flying out um, some local people from Borodula. So and that was the Air Force? Yeah, straight away. Yeah, yeah. Raff, yeah, yep. yeah so, that's so um, cool. The plan was they were going to run um, some buses from MacArthur River Mine to Borrell and pick people up, take them to the mine so they could be flown out in the jet. Yep. But they couldn't, obviously, the road Can't was get cut. To the so mine. Yeah. couldn't get there. So then, um, yeah, the Air Force were called in. They brought in, a, um, uh, I think the C 27. Okay. Um, the Spartan. So a big twin engine, bloody uh, yeah, yeah, big, cargo big propeller cu- thing. Yeah, yeah big yep. cargo plane, basically. And um, and a couple of C-130s, yep. so Hercules. Super Hercules. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, they actually brought some of them from Townsville, I think, um, and they were flying over pretty well all day trying to land, but, the yeah, it was just I too windy. I did see that on the news. Because I was, this whole th- I'm up in Darwin for this. Mm. Like <laughs> my, my, my version of this is all, like after cycling Lincoln, which, yeah, no damage here, no flooding. It was, yeah, very, very minor little thing. I went up to Darwin. And then had planned on being up there for a week or so, spend some time with the wife and kids, then come back down. Yeah. And then in that meantime, all this starts happening. So I'm literally an observer from like all I'm getting my information from either you or from the news, yep. which obviously King, King Ash Bay doesn't exist according to the news. Everything's about <laughs> borrowed all up. But yeah. Anyway, we're only a little place here, but yeah. So I did see that they had footage of like yeah the plane circling like it's the middle of a cyclone and they're like oh we're waiting for a um a, a clearing in the weather so we can land. I'm like. <laughs> that's going to be like four days away. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so they so couldn't land. So Couldn't land. So they, I think they had about 700 odd people there waiting to waiting to get on aircraft to be flown out. And, um, yeah, they just obviously couldn't land. It was just pouring down rain, yeah. really windy, you know. It was gusting 40 knots across the runway. And yeah. So it was pretty wild. So, um, but most people waited there nearly all day until late in the afternoon. And then everyone was sort of told, well, look, you're pretty much going to have to go back home. We're just not going to get an aircraft in today and pretty much, yeah, bunker down because, um, yeah, the cyclone's going to be here late tonight, early tomorrow. So, um, and it was. But, um, yeah, rolled through and uh, uh, we got past that bit of it uh, with fairly minor damage in Borrell. Yep. You know, our power went out for all of about 10 minutes in Borrell, oh, like wow. at, at our end of town. Um but by the next morning, uh, Rocky Creek Bridge, which is the, the creek that dissects through the middle of Borrell and splits Borrell into half, um, uh, basically that bridge was not – you couldn't drive across it by the yeah. next morning. Um, it was up that high. You couldn't get across. Um, yeah, it was just, yeah, wild how, how fast it went up. And then, uh, yeah, they decided after the cyclone passed because the, the river was coming up so fast and with no Telstra, we couldn't even look at the gauging stations anymore to see how much water was coming down. So um, there was a fair bit of guesswork in it, I think. But, yeah. um, you know, they had people, obviously, that know a lot more about it than you and I do. Yeah. That were, that were looking at it and they were saying, no, no, it's going to be a record flood, you know, one in a 100-year event sort of thing. Um, we need to start evacuating people out. So, uh, yeah, the next thing was is getting people across Rocky Creek by barge, by flood boat, and um, then getting them, picking them up, taking them to the airport, and then they did fly C-130s in again. Yeah, so the majority of people... In in Burrell or live on the other side of Rocky Creek, yeah. where where you were on the on that on your side of Rocky Creek, that's where the airstrip is. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yep. So people have to cross over to your side and then then get their way to the airport. Yeah, and on, on our side, there's pretty much there's no real real houses or anything there. There's only yep. half a dozen handful of houses on our side. Yeah, it's but it's the, the businesses there. So the caravan park, Carpentary Grill, like the guest house, um, uh, our servo, the old pub. Yep. Um, and a couple of other businesses that are, that are there and the council chambers and council um, yeah, okay. yard. Um, but other than that, there's no, not many many houses, only, only a couple of houses there. So majority of people live on the other side of Rocky Creek. They all had to get across Rocky Creek to get to the airport. So, so yeah. the, the sea range is 
use their boats or something so like that. So Sea Ranger had uh, Sea Rangers had one boat in yep. um, and ferrying people across. Um, then uh, Antes, um, so or, or Ferg, sorry, um, Fire and Emergency Response Group from okay. Boratola, uh, local guys. Yeah, they've got a flood boat there, um, which I don't know. It only takes a handful of people at a time, so they're just ferrying people backwards and forwards across Rocky Creek. We'll put some photos up so people can see what we're talking yeah. about. And, um, but it was it came up that quick that um, like it was nearly up to the power. Well, the bottom of the power, bottom set of power lines were you know probably only um, you know five hundred mil, eight hundred mil out of water. So. Uh, Wow. Yeah, it was yeah, a lot of water there. But, yeah, we were ferrying people backwards and forwards uh, from Rocky Creek. Um, I, I had a high car there still, so um, I was ferrying people backwards from Rocky Creek back up to the airport and then unloading freight off the aircraft into the back of the ute with um, all the fireys and uh, coppers and stuff like that and then taking it back down, loading it onto boats and then, yeah, backwards and forwards for a few days doing that, yeah, like wow. ferrying, ferrying people up and, and ferrying food and stuff back. So, yeah, it was a... Very, very, very big couple it, of days. Thrifty, does it, does Thrifty give you a discount on the no. hire? Or oh, I'm, I'm still waiting. For, I'm still waiting. <laughs> they, they're still charging my credit card, mate. It's about four thousand dollar hire car so oh, far. Geez. So, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to work on that one. If you're listening, Thrifty, give me a discount. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, far out. Yeah, literally <laughs> unloading big Air Force planes. Oh, that's unreal. Yeah, yeah, backing straight up, mate. Back, backing straight up to the uh, cargo doors of the C one hundred and thirty, unloading, uh, unloading freight with uh, with all the coppers and fireys that were that were flown in to to assist, and and then uh, unloading everything by hand onto the, onto boats, and yeah, getting across the river for for the shop on the other side, so people didn't run out of tucker. So um, while, so while that's happening in Boralula out here at King Ash Bay, the power was off, but so they tur- turned the power off before they left. Yeah, so when it, when it looked like it was getting fairly bad, um, uh, I was still down south and um, I was speaking to um, some of our other um, management team and, um, you know, uh, we we're all fairly concerned about what was going to happen with it all. So um, uh, we put the call out, basically. We put a letter out and just said, look, anyone that's um, camping here, you know, the best idea is to go, pretty more or less. Um, so, you know, we, we can't force anyone. We're not the police. We can't force anyone to go. But, um, but you know, we strongly advise people to leave and, and, um, you know, if you refuse to leave, at least go and park somewhere where you're not under trees and, you know, not going to get flooded and things like that. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, some people didn't want to go and stayed. And, right. and that, yeah, that ended up becoming a bit of an issue later on when the after the cyclone passed, that was the first bit. But the second bit was when it started flooding and then the river came up um, a lot higher than, um, you know, than anyone's seen it before yeah. in Boralula. Um, and, yeah, the certainly the threat was there of... Um, of King Ash Bay going underwater completely. Yeah. So I um, um, actually, uh, uh, a friend of a friend, um, uh, well, a, a mate of mine got me a number for a fella, um, Rankin um, from uh, Rank Rotors. And um, um, mate, he sort of pretty much dropped everything, flew down to Boralola, picked us up. and um, helicopter. Helicopter, yep. yeah, and, and brought us out here. And we did a quick lap around King Ash Bay and then um, ended up, we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to land or not. Um, the plan originally was to, for him to go to Heartbreak and pick up our um, our vice president and who also looks after all our power generation and um, our water supply stuff. He was going to pick him up, fly him back in to Boralula, refuel, pick me up, come out to King Ash Bay, land, drop us here, and then he was going to go back home and leave us here so that we could get the power and water and everything like that going and, you know, make sure everything was good. But... Uh, with the way it was, yeah, we weren't sure we'd be able to even land here if there was enough dry ground to even land. So, because you're only getting sketchy information, like patches of information, like yeah, of, yeah. of how much what did, what's underwater and what isn't, and yeah, yeah, and certainly most things were underwater. Yeah. So, um, well, we've got, you got a heap of footage there, which we can show you lots of shots of that. Yeah, so of the the vast amounts of water, it's incredible. Oh, it was just crazy, mate! Like we we yeah did did a couple of laps of King Ash and and. Um, yeah, got some some images and things like that for future reference, and then um, and he did say he said, look, you know, I think I can get him between the trees there on the main road. I should be able to put it down on the road there if you want to go and talk to anyone. So um, that's what he did. He put it down on the road. I walked up and uh, spoke to a couple of guys that were here, and they were all all happy. They had plenty of food and um, water and you know tucker and everything like that. So they were you know plenty of beer. So. <laughs> So they were they were more or less happy yeah, and we're said no, nah, nah. sort of immediate danger. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So yeah, they, said, they were all pretty happy and they said no, nah, we got a bit of a plan going on. We're all good. So um, which was great. Um, I went back, back and uh, flew back into Boratula. Um and then um, yeah, only the next day they said, look, 
pretty much everyone on your side of the river has to be evacuated um, because we think it's going to go a lot higher still. Where you were on that side, yeah, of, Rocky yeah, on yeah, that side okay. of Rocky Creek. So saying we want to get everyone out of there because it um, looks like it's going to flood. So I ended up picking up one of the other um, – uh, one of the uh, police officers there and uh, driving around seeing everyone that was on that side tell them they had you know two options more or less you had to go to the school to the evacuation what they set up a set up a, an evacuation center there uh, uh sorry a um like a bit of a flood shelter there yeah and um so the options were you'll either go there or be flown out so all of our crew our staff and that from the shop and borrow all over and my old man kate her sister everyone like that ended up getting flown out yep. and um i was going to go as well and then um um, yeah, the more or less uh, uh, the local guys from Burrell needed somebody to go to come down to King Ash Bay with them by river um, and um, said, you know, do you want to come down with us and, and um, go down and see these guys down there? We want everyone out of King Ash Bay as well because it looks like it's going to get real bad. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't overly keen on it, but no, I was, you know, I wasn't going to say no, but... Um, but yeah, put the uh, police boat in there and then came Must down. Must have been sketchy on the way down in a few areas. Oh man, like going through Rocky Creek to get, even to get the, like it's hard to explain. You, you're going through the tree, the, the tree tops, you know, because the water's seven, eight metres deep in some spots that through there. So you're literally in the canopy of the trees in the bush. You you've have got no, no idea where you are. N- no, not really. Like it's, yeah, you've you've got to be really, really careful. Obviously, you know, the only thing you have to give you any sort of direction is the flow of water. You, yeah. know, you know which way the water's coming from, so... Um, and you know, obviously, to get from Rocky Creek out to the main river, you've got to go pretty much 90 degrees to the flow of water. So um, get out and find the middle of the river, which is even finding the middle of the river is difficult because it's uh, there's so much water everywhere. Yeah. You, you don't, you know, it's yeah, it's it's sort of hard to tell in in a lot of places, even coming down the river. And then you go get places like uh, Duck Island and Devil's Elbow and places like that where there's big bends in the river and, and rock bars and things like that underneath. Like there's big whirlpools yeah, and, and back eddies oh. and things and yeah, it gets real, real, real crazy. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I came down with them guys and then um, we parked up pretty much on the road um, that drop goes down to the boat ramp. So anyone that's been to King Ash Bay before will know there's a bit of a hill that goes down off the main, off Baton Road that goes down oh, yeah. to the boat ramp. Where the first blackboard is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You parked that's up it. there. That's yep. crazy. Yeah, parked up there next to the road pretty much and then. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, one of the local fellas here um, picked us up in the buggy and we drove around and grabbed sort of everyone that was within earshot, brought them down to um, this one central point and then, um, yeah, the police basically said, hey, guys, everyone's got to get out, you know. Um, everyone was asked to leave already. We need everyone to go now because it's, you know, it's not an option. You need to need to go. So um, what, so what was their worry? Like if the if the water does come up that high, it's like they've got no way of saving them if they, if someone needs help. Oh, well, that's, that's it, yeah. mate, you know, and, and, you know, they can only go off the information that they had. Yeah, um, and all, this isn't the police officer officers, uh, their opinion. This is the people higher up which have oh, told for them. Oh, sure, for sure, mate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, it's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're only getting their information from their, yeah, from yeah, their superior, superiors and yeah. whatever. So, um, you know, they're, and they're, you know, trying to do the right thing by everyone as well, you know. Um, that no one wants to see anyone get, get hurt or anything, so... Um, so they had a chat to everyone said pretty much, you know, uh, we can take some people back in the police boat. Um, I was going to launch my um, big boat and um, and get one other boat and uh, ferry people backwards to, back to Borrell that night. But, yeah, and, you know, people weren't real keen on going. Everyone, you know, everyone that was here was happy to stay. So, yep. um, yeah, I don't know. It was a <laughs> yeah. very, very stressful time for a lot of people, obviously. Yep. So um, myself included. So, um, yeah, so pretty much everyone, yeah, we went back and, I said to the cop, I said, well, you know, I might as well go back with you. If no, if no one's going, then... Um, yeah, I'll, so you I'll, were, you, you were going to, like, put your crab boat in the water and, yeah, and take yeah. people back up? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I mean, you know, I could put yeah. e- easily half a dozen people in my yeah. boat and take half a dozen people back. There was 24 people here, so between three boats, we could have got most of the people in one go and then just slip yeah. back down one so, more trip probably. And Yeah, so you weren't coming down to tell people to leave? That, that, <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah. no. That was nothing to do with me, mate. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it didn't bother me either yeah. way, you know. It was um, not, not definitely not my decision, uh, as, as I said yeah. before, you know. I mean, it's it's not in our, you know, uh, you know, certainly not in our rules that we can tell people what they can yeah, and can't absolutely. do. Um, yeah. It's absolutely up to the to the police and or, or the um you know, uh, emergency coordinators to make those those decisions, and and that was the decision they made. And yeah. again, you know, I mean, they weren't going to arrest everyone that was here. I mean, it's you know, yeah. But anyway, it's um, yeah. very. I don't know if you can tell by listening. We're sort of, I suppose, we are sort of treading lightly on how we're talking about this whole situation to a certain extent because it was a, it is a divisive issue. There's there's some people here that that think 
things were handled very badly and, and there's others that have the opposite opinion and that. So we're, we're just trying to put – we're not trying to offer opinions here on anything. We're just trying to put out facts and, and, oh, and just talk exactly about – Exactly what happened. Exactly, you know? yeah, exactly. Exactly so, what happened. So, so we're, not, we're not here to, to say anyone did the wrong thing or the right thing or the whatever. So nah, that's nah. why I was asking about – so they, even the, from the police's point of view, what like – they they didn't want to come down and and do that stuff. They they well, mate, they'd still had seven hundred people in Burrell exactly, that they're yeah. trying to deal with. You know, um, yeah. they've got people in the in the school. They've got you know, you know, twenty people, thirty people to a house there. You know, so they're they're trying to keep you know, um, you know, social order in Burrell, or as well as evacuate people, as well as organise food and fuel and yeah. power and water and all all those different things that the emergency controller needs needs them to do. So. You know, um, yeah, the last thing they wanted to do was put a boat and come down here and hence hence why they came out before the event and told everyone that they had to go. Yeah. Uh, well, told the majority of people that they saw. Obviously, they weren't going to go and door knock every single house, but yeah. um, they certainly went around around as much as they could for an hour or so and, and saw who they could and, and told them to leave. And look, at the end of the day, no one didn't know. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't care what anyone says. No one didn't know it was going to happen. So, yeah. so especially when we turned the power off, you know, so, yeah. you know, there was a reason we turned the power off because we were concerned that with a cyclone coming, you know, power lines could get taken out and things like that. Yeah. So, the power um, offs that saved, that saved my, uh, the place I stay in. Mm. Um, there's the two, like, I've got, there's three aircon units in it. Two of them still work. They've been totally underwater, mm. but because the power was off, I, I assume, would have helped. Yep. Same, same with fri uh, fridges and freezers. I've plugged in two fridges and they and let them dry out and plugged them back in and they both work. Yeah. So I figure if the, if all these things were still on and they went underwater, it, it wouldn't have uh, been good for the electronics. Oh, no, that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah. you, so, you hope that uh, everything trips. But, uh, yeah. the, the, you know, but having said that, mate, I'm sure there'll be people here that whose who's, uh, whole um, power boards went underwater, you know, the whole yeah. power box went underwater. So. Yeah. So, yeah, and yeah, no, I was a... Uh, yeah, very, very, very stressful time, mate. Um, still is, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah, well, we're still yeah. still sort of in the middle of it, but um, yeah. but uh, I've, well, I've, got, I've got weeks worth of work to do. Oh, mate, yeah, it's it's going to be in my place. It's going to be months. Um, yeah, you know, anyone that knows the campground down at Jenny Flats along the river would know what that looks like normally. Uh, that's you know a, a lot of the new taps and and uh, water articulation that got put in last year or the year before. That's now in the river, like it's the, oh, there's that much banks no. gone and there's. There's, um, you know, uh, where roads that were put down, good gravel roads and things that turned into rivers. So now there's big swamps down there, and yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a very long time before we get it all sorted. Well, wow. well, if it's changed that one little bend that much, I wonder what it's done down the river. If sandbars well, bar, sand moved, and yeah, yeah, apparently there's wow. heaps, heaps there. So well, the boat ramp here is, you know, it's got thousands of tons of sand on it now. Yeah. You know, well, right, as of right this second, virtually unusable. Yeah, yeah. Well, unless maybe, it floods again. Yeah. <laughs> unless it floods again, it's no, pretty no, much no, no, unusable. No, no so. thank you. No, thank you. Tell no, it to well. get stuff. We do not need more rain. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, no, very, very, uh, yeah, very difficult times at the moment, mate. But, uh, you know, we'll get it all sorted, though. That's the, yeah, the long yeah. and the short of it. I mean, the road coming in here is as bad as I've ever seen it. Yeah, um, and that's massive big probably the biggest issue at the moment. Because, oh, well, we haven't even, the, from a club, so we've got all, all residents of Kiash Bay. Most people have been, let's say, heavily affected mm. by the flood. But from a club point of view, the club's done unreal. Like the toilet blocks haven't gone under, the office, uh, the servo, which is a separate business, but they, uh, their the actual business didn't go underwater. Yep. I think their residences did, but yeah. Um, yep. Um, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Machinery office. shed didn't go under office. Yeah. The bar didn't go underwater. Yeah. The, the powerhouse generators didn't go underwater. The staff accommodation. Yep. Yeah, the club's done really well. So um, once that road's fixed, like the, the, the club can be pretty much back to operational. Yeah. Yeah. It's only things like the campground that need to be fixed up. Yeah. So like all the powered sites, obviously there's, um, you know, a million trees down everywhere. And, and at the moment, because it's been raining up until um, uh, yesterday, it's been raining flat out. So, uh, uh, you know, you can't even get a machine in to drag those trees off the out of the campground and, and yeah. uh, drag them somewhere and get rid of them, you know, uh, you can't get to the dump here at the moment. That road's all washed out and, you know, I've seen several vehicles bogged up yeah. to the... Shout out to Bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Froggy. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know, if you drive right down there, it's uh, it's up to your sideboards in, in black soil at the moment. So uh, you can't even get, you know, that's the big thing. People have cleaned a lot of their houses and stuff out and dragged all their stuff out. My fridges and freezers were totally full of, well, not full, but they had food in them. And yeah. yeah, so obviously the power was out for a week or whatever. And yeah. then... Um, then yeah, had to get unplugged and moved outside, but we, I couldn't even empty them. Mm. 
I had to stay, had had to sit outside with the doors closed because yeah, yeah. I couldn't even dump the rubbish. But yeah, yeah. I've got my freezers going again because I'm like my house wasn't affected because four meters off the ground. But um, but all my stuff downstairs, obviously, like my freezer and stuff, got water through it and. I was the same thing. I just let it dry out and then turn it back on, freeze everything back that's in there. <laughs> oh, that's man. in there. And then I'll, I'll deal with it when we can get to the dump because uh, otherwise it's going to bloody stink everything out. So, um, so yeah, the, all the little things that you don't even think about on the day-to-day, like just going to the dump, for example, is, uh, you know, all that stuff's completely changed at the moment. And, you know, uh, fuel's getting a little bit low for the um, generator shed. You know, yeah. we're, we're working oh, yeah. working on a mission at the moment to... Uh, to get fuel in so um there's all sorts of ideas being floated around i mean uh you know i've got to say the government's been fairly ha- i've got to make, make the fly chinooks <laughs> fish if you're a listener mate we need we need a big tank of diesel in here please <laughs> i think it, 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 wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the worst idea mate i, I, I think the, he listens to the podcast every now and then yeah oh yeah. look out come on brass he rocks the merch he's got the golf yeah. mud crabbers cap and everything oh roll in for anzac day mate yeah. it's coming oh, up absolutely um <laughs> yeah no, i mean yeah Mate, it's just uh, trying to do anything is an absolute mission. So we, we've got people from the government coming tomorrow um, to to do some assistance stuff and um, some surveys and things like that. And you've already had and some people come out from police and fireys and stuff. They yeah, came out there. They did an aerial survey. Yeah, yeah. And stuff with already. a drone. Yeah, yeah. yeah did uh, aerial mapping with a drone. Yeah. And so now uh, the follow up from that is more people coming out tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So there's people from the government coming out tomorrow to do some more stuff. But because the road here now is closed, like I think they're flying in by helicopter tomorrow. So oh, crikey. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's pretty full on. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly I think the biggest flood we well, it is the biggest flood probably the club has seen um, in its certainly in recent years anyway. Um, you know, maybe forty years ago, something like that might yep. have been. Oh, it's Kathy the club's fortieth fortieth birthday, 40th this, birthday year. this year. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I think it's happy birthday. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, bloody hell! Yeah, bring us some presents, you mob, when you come up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so oh, there's a lot of work, and I mean, it's been great. You know, we've had a lot of people um, message us and, and ring and, and want to come up and help. A lot of people want to help, yeah. But it's just, it's there's not really not much anyone can do just at the minute. Like, it's just a matter of uh, waiting for things to dry out, yeah. you know. And we need that road, the road. The road in, yeah. 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 So, again, we, you know, the assessors came and looked at that. Can I bring up some photos that I took there? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll show you the road. It's not pretty. No, it's like I said, it's the worst and, I've and, seen and in the road, years. And the photos don't even do it justice. No, like some no. of these washouts are over a metre deep, mm. you know. There was an, a car abandoned on the road on Sunday. I think they must have come and got it now, but there was okay. a car got bogged really badly on Sunday and, and they abandoned the vehicle there. So, uh, yeah, um, assessors came out this morning. They had a look at it and... Um, yeah, just, yeah, pretty much like no, nah, not much we can do at the moment. Uh, it's just still too wet. You can't get a machine in there. You drive a machine in there and just get bogged and make it worse, break stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's the position we're in here too. Is like you know, a lot of people want to help clean up and stuff, but you just you can't do anything. You know, you drive, start driving the back of tractors around and get bogged. All you're going to do is just you know bust water pipes and water yeah. mains and stuff around the camp and, and make a big mess that you're going to have to clean up again later anyway. That's so right, yeah, going just, backwards before you go forward. Sort yeah, of thing. so the best thing is everyone to sort of do their own thing, clean up their places as much as they can until it dries out enough and then we'll have a big work and be hopefully and uh, and get it all sorted out, you know, in the coming uh, days or week. Yep. So, yeah, very uh, unfortunate times, mate. Very disappointed we didn't have the Easter Classic because, uh, you know, yeah. we're looking forward to that. As a positive, it was... In, in years gone by, in my, in my time here at King Ash Bay, I reckon there's been two other years that I can remember where it was postponed mm. because of possible weather coming and both times it, the weather was – it turned out that it was absolutely fine and then we could have held it anyway. Yeah. So at least at least this time it was cancelled or postponed and, and there's just no way you could have run it. Oh, you know, like, yeah, well, we, yeah. well, I think we, we talked about doing it on a May Day long weekend and – and I'm, you know, the way things are at the moment, mate. I don't, you know, that'll be a stretch to do it then too. Yeah, think, wow. You know? Okay. Because that's only, my day weekend's only four weeks, I think, five weeks away. So yeah, right, yeah. So uh, you know, I think that'll be a stretch to have it done by then because there's so much catch up to do now. Yeah. You know, the club's well and truly behind the eight ball at the moment with, uh, you know, even uh, you know making money and things like that. You know, yep. it's. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, both you and I both know that as well. Like, <laughs> just so, finished a massive big holiday, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you should be mud crabbing by now, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's not happening. And then the yeah, your lodge, like, King, well, that's the thing before after Cyclone Lincoln, but before Megan, 
King Ash Bay was in full swing. Yeah. Like we had like the lodge was full of customers, the cabins, the houseboats, camps, campground was starting to uh, have people in it. We were in full swing. Yeah. And then, yeah, then it all went to shit. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. And now we're back to back to January times. You yeah, know, pre- like, pretty much we're back to like wet season yeah. type trading again. So yeah, um, it's uh, – But, you know, it's everyone and that's, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I, for, for I still me, consider man, myself it, lucky I didn't lose any, anything for, yeah. for my house or the business or anything like that. But at the same time, it's like, well, you probably lose, you know, six, eight weeks worth of trade, which, you know – It's probably your busiest time of year as well. In the busiest time of year. So, yeah – you know, it's uh, you know, six or eight weeks of trade is probably uh, you know, thirty percent of your year done. You know, yeah, far out. So uh, that's that's all of your that's all your profit pretty much gone. Yeah. So because uh, you're still paying insurances and and uh, you know things like that. So. Yep. So yeah. if people want to donate money, where do they send it to? Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll put a link. Uh, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, buy the merch. <laughs> In all seriousness, seriousness, though, buy the merch, <laughs> please. Yeah, because yeah. I'm in the same way. Even though like Ash can't go crabbing, he can't. Like his lodge is empty. Then, then on my side, like yeah, I'm, I make fishing videos for a living, and I'm, I haven't been making videos for f- four weeks now, which means I, might, I don't get views, which means I don't get ad revenue, which means I don't get merch sales, which means yeah, all that. So yeah, it, it's affected everyone. Like obviously the servo here, like they've got like think of how many customers that should have been through their oh, doors man i know it's a and the the houseboats the everyone yeah it's a, a huge flow on effect the, the the as a positive though the club will weather this you know like the club will oh, get, for sure the club yeah, the yeah. club's a big big powerhouse yeah yeah, yeah not, hasn't sustained much damage and and give it give it a few weeks or i don't know how long it'll be but the, the doors will open and and things will be very normal very quickly yeah yeah we'll, we'll start getting people in the coming weeks, but um, it's just a matter of getting that road fixed yeah. and, and the boat ramp because without the boat ramp, there's no point in coming here, really. Absolutely. So, yeah, unless you're a, a resident or you have a house here that you want to come up and check on or something like that, there's no point in even coming to King Bay if you can't access the river. So, but you know, I can tell you, I've been working really hard um, and very closely with our local member and and um, people in government as well. Um, yeah, and, you're getting and, and call, you're getting calls from government on Easter Sunday. Yeah, we're around here yeah. watching the boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Which we haven't spoken about. We might not even speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> After the result. Uh, so. Anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, no, you were getting calls on Easter Sunday. So I'm like, oh, this is this is promising. And so they're obviously keen to get, get this resolved, which would be which would be nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm attending meetings uh, most days um, via um, Zoom or, or, um, or one other thing like Zoom anyway. And, um, yeah, attending meetings, uh, um, well, all right throughout the cyclone, even before the cyclone um, – uh, even when it was still a low, we were, uh, I was attending meetings. Even when I was driving back from town in the high car, I was pulling up and uh, like pulled up in uh, Adelaide River, Mataranka, um, Highway Inn. Oh, yeah. Cape, Cape these would have been like emergency services um, yeah, yeah. briefings and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. already, eh? Yeah, so emergency this services. Is what, this is what people, a lot of people don't see, like mm. the, stu- the behind-the-scenes stuff that, that you do. It's almost, it's almost frustrating being friends with you, like the amount of time. Like he gets 200 phone calls a day. <laughs> And all of them are bloody important as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of boys said, just, just come down to my place. We've got no phone service out there. I said, oh, I wish I could. But, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, most of them are, are quite important. And, yeah, uh, and a, you know, and pe- the- people want information as well. You know, we've got yeah. me- members ring up. And, and it's been pretty good. Like, you know, everyone's been really, really, really good saying, you know, I'm really sorry to bother you or whatever. We just, you know, want to find out what's happening with our place or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, trying to, try to do the right thing by as many people as possible. But... You know, sometimes like today, even like I thought today would be a breeze sort of thing, but in the end, obviously, just straight out, straight after Easter weekend, uh, heaps of other people are back at work now. Different government agencies and NGOs and things that have got people that are, want to do stuff around around the place. So, you know, today was just phone call after phone call after phone call, <laughs> trying to uh, yeah, trying to get things sorted. So, so but look, it's all it's all good. It's all part of it. Um, it's no dramas. Easy. Take it on, mate. Easy, easy to do it. Easy to. But we did watch the boxing on Sunday, mate. That was a. That was a. It was a good fight. At the end of the day, it was a. It was a good oh, fight. It was a, it, it was a. It was a battle. It wasn't even a fight. There it was. There was, was no way that I thought they were ever going to let it keep going. Like as soon <laughs> as I saw his head um, after that uh, little uh, forearm thing, yeah. I don't because it, it looked like it was. It wasn't even his elbow. No, it, was, it, was it was like his like forearm. Yeah. And uh, uh, Timmy Zoo fought obviously with uh, Fundora. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, there's no way they're going to keep let this keep going. Well, they brought the doctor in, and he and he he shook his head straight yeah. away, and we thought he was going to call it. Yeah. No, they let it go. The twelve was that. I was at the end of the second round. Yeah. Second? Yeah. Yeah, end of the second round, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah they, they still let it go 12, which I'm so happy because there's not a single person on the planet that's interested in the fight that wanted it to end, whether whether it was Zoo, whether it was the crowd, whether it was the people at home, no one wanted it no, no. To, to stop. So I'm glad they let it let yeah, it go. Yeah, and, and it, it was the right decision in the end, I think. Um, you know, he was able to protect himself, but it, at the end of the day, like, he, he couldn't see. You, you know, yeah. he, you, you could see him trying to wipe <laughs> – imagine wearing boxing gloves trying yeah. to wipe, wipe blood out of your eyes. Like, yeah. it would be – yeah, no, it would be horrendous. So, um, But he battled on and survived the whole time, mate. Yeah. So, and, and still put some hurt on him too. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, well, one you know of for, the, for Nora. It was a split decision. Yeah. yeah well, one of the judges right. had yeah, yeah. to do winning. Yeah, and um, – you know, and he was, he put some hurt on him too. Like, he, yeah. he, you know, his bust, his nose was busted yeah. even long after the fight. He still had bloody, his nose was, was yeah. locked up with, uh, was shit and, um, yeah, he's bloody, uh, piss and blood from the mouth for a fair bit of it. So, you know, it was, uh, if it wasn't for that bloody head though, oh, if that if didn't it, happen, if that didn't it would have been, mate, open, it been over, over in the fourth, fifth round for sure. Yeah. I didn't, Zoo, I didn't Zoo think was, it was making Zoo's faster, fitter. More calculated, mm. just a better boxer. Simple oh, as yeah, that. He you was know? a world champion. Well, yeah. Was, yeah. but uh, but no, I think because they before the 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 match happened. Because and again, he wasn't even supposed to fight him. No, he only had a, um, what twelve days or something notice. Yeah. Or not, was it even I don't even know it was that it long. Wasn't long. Yeah, so uh, he didn't have a whole lot of notice to to even uh, prepare for it. But um, but he took him on, and because it was such a short time frame, they um, um, you're looking for that cricket, mate. No, like no, I, no. I can I can hear this. There's cricket. There's bugs and shit everywhere. I just hope, all it, around, I just so. hope it's not coming through the mics. Before. No, oh, yeah, it is. It is a little bit annoying. Yeah, although um, the lighting has improved heaps. Oh much, yeah. yeah, it is much better now. Yeah, we've got big shadows there from that yeah, light yeah. over there, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, because it was only a few days or twelve days or whatever it was notice. Um, I don't know if all the contracts were all done 100. percent So it was a verbal agreement for rematch clause. Uh, oh, yeah. And and initially it looked like they weren't going to honour the the verbal agreement, but then I did read something today that says that um, Pandora's team have um, have said no, they will honour the verbal agreement oh. and and do a rematch. So yeah, so um you know and they said yeah as soon as Tim's ready we'll we'll do it. So um I know his brother's fighting in Nikita. Th- yeah, uh, not that long away. No, yeah, uh, the day before Anzac Day I think it is. Oh right, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty sure it's the day before Anzac Day. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Yeah, cool. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it, obviously it'll take a little bit of time to, to heal up and yeah. get that stitched up and um, yeah, get sorted. But no, very much looking forward to it. I know a couple of the fellas here, Mick and Bullfrog, they've already told me, mate, if uh, if it's happening in Australia, mate, whatever happens, you buy buy, buy the tickets and we'll, we'll all go to it. So, <laughs> so, well, it better not happen for about 12 months. Yeah, I need, some, <laughs> <laughs> I need to save some money first. Need some money, man. Oh, uh, <laughs> hell. Oh, what a crazy, crazy start to the year, mate. Yeah, 2024 is going to be my year too. Yeah. Oh, man, I hope so. I had such, like, personally, I had such a great start to the year. Mm. My channel, I was smashing the videos out. Had got my PB Dewey, PB Goldie. Had, like, all that PB Goldie day when you were overseas. But, yeah, yeah went out with Mullet, um, Shredder, Shredder Ant. Bullfrog Ant. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, yeah, had uh, best actual fishing, best day fishing ever. Mm. Like, it was – and weather was great. It, it was – just awesome and i'm like oh man this that was year. a really good video actually I, yeah. I watched that on the i think i watched that on the plane actually yeah okay um actually i think i watched that on the plane from um sydney to brisbane i think yeah radio it pretty much took up the whole the whole flight oh perfect <laughs> no it was good but yeah so no, we had had a bloody good day and then yeah so all, everything's just really going really well for me and then yeah just quickly duck home after cycling lincoln and then, well, you're glad you didn't stay, mate. You're yeah. under, underwater. <laughs> well, that's the thing because I feel like I was frustrated because I knew that, like, we knew the floodwaters were going to come up, and I knew I could save some stuff. Yeah. If I was here, but then it came up so high that, um, that like, even if I was here, there's things that happen that you just wouldn't expect. For, I think I even mentioned it before about storing stuff on top of fridges and freezers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because you don't think like, if the water comes up high, if they they float. Even the washing machine floated. Yeah. It's got a big hole in the bottom. I have that. Anyway. Yeah. Everything. All, all the appliances are up on their side. All the kitchen cabinets have swelled. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Pretty my, much everything. My, like all my power to like my welder, my drop saw, my uh, Honda generator went completely underwater. The I don't know. Anyway, I'm not gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. It, yeah. I'm. I'm not special here. Like everyone, a lot of people lost a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. No, it was. Yeah, it was pretty bad, mate. It yeah. Was, it was. Yeah, real bad. So um, yeah. Obviously, I got in. You only got back a couple of days ago. Yeah. We got back in. Uh, I got back in a few days before you. And uh, as soon as I could basically drive in, um, drive, drive in, I think I was probably the first person to drive all the way through. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Lucky before the road had, had closed, like l- yeah. legally. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was right as of right now, it is closed. Road's closed. Yeah. 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 So uh, while well, I do repairs on it, hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, I drove out and um, yeah, just couldn't believe the damage everywhere. Like the, you know, I went and had a look at your place, obviously, and. You know, try to work out there was some stuff with uh, with power and that for, you know, uh, like, you know, Damo got himself a helicopter and he flew back in himself yeah. and, and got the power and that going, you know. Big shout out to Damo. He did a great job doing that. Um, you know, um, I know uh, Millsy and Frank, you know, fellas here, they, they went around and uh, helped him, you know, check power boxes and t- turn everyone's main switches off and pull pole, pole fuses where there was issues and things. So... You know, the boys hooked in, really hooked in and then got stuff going so we could get power on at least. So um, so we could try and, uh, you know, you know, try and actually get started to do some stuff. So, um, you know, so that was good. But, uh, you know, I came out and had a look at your place and, you know, went through and just opened up all the storm shutters and, yeah. and things and, you know, try to clean out. Which is know, a, which the, was a big help. And then the next day you go around and um, you were over there doing stuff for me and I'll, I'll even bring up a couple of photos and you've got, like William here, legend, and uh, and the mad mullet yeah, out there, yeah. bloody sweeping out, like, like uh, what's it called, squeegeeing out yeah, the yeah. floors and that. I'll tell you what, mentally that was the best thing to come, to walk into and have at least inside the house, like the floors were clean. Yeah. It was totally emptied out. Mentally that, that, that helped so much for me was if I got back and there were still appliances laying on the ground and, and mud everywhere, uh, uh, it just would have been... Yeah, but um, even now, I still, even though I've been here for a few days and I've done heaps, I still sort of don't know where to start. Every, any given moment, if I go, right, if I went home right now and tried and thought, all right, well, I'll, I'll do some more work. Like I'll do a bit more cleaning up. I might. I, I just you, you see something that needs doing, and as you walk over to do it, you see five more things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, because obviously all your kitchen cabinets and everything are uh, dusted there, buddy. Yeah. yeah. You know, all all the timbers buggered and that yeah. for me in the water. So and no, all the th- all the things inside them are all full of like <laughs> bowls and cups and stuff are all full of water, like flood water. But yeah, anyway, what, we, I, what I come and see, seen you the other day and yeah. uh, seen how you go on and yeah, and you'd pull a lot of stuff out of the cupboards and drawers and you you washed all them and then stacked them up on the bench and then you're like, well, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah, where do I put the clean stuff? I've got, <laughs> I've got no, no covers to put everything back yeah. into. Like, what, what am I going to do with all this stuff so I can get the rest of it out and yeah. pull them bowls out that are still full of water and yeah. stuff? Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, but... Could be worse. Could be worse, mate. Could be worse. Could the be the worse. roof didn't blow off. Still standing, mate. So, that's it, man. You know, ultimately in six months we'll look back and everyone will be laughing about it. And yeah. Like the, Hopefully we'll get a new new road, new flash one. Yeah, <laughs> new flash one, eh? And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, we'll be all, all laughing about it then. Well, 2025 yeah. is our year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they call it a one-in-a-hundred-year event. I, yeah. It's unfo- unfortunate these one-in-a-hundred-year events seem to happen regularly. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Where they built the big bridge over the MacArthur in Burrell there on the way to Queensland, like on the top road yeah. on the Savannah Way. I remember when they uh, when they first finished that, they said that was uh, to... Uh, uh, one in one hundred year floods are to go oh, under. Yeah. That's it. But uh, how many times uh, have you seen it go under? Oh, nearly every year. <laughs> <laughs> Most years. Uh, well, well, before it even got officially opened, it had been underwater by oh, no. two meters. So, so yeah, it was a uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's how, well that the the bridge level. I reckon, that's right around the minor flood level. I reckon. Yeah. 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 Oh man, wild, wild. But yeah. Anyway, we're. Do We're I, back, getting back into yeah, it. Yeah, we are. Well, well let's uh, let's just finish up with some formalities. I reckon the club's open tonight, so yep. we go down and have a beer. But yeah, so do you, oh, I reckon we should probably add a song or two. Mm. Have, have you had a th- think about anything? Oh, oh yeah. I, 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 originally I thought about um, adding. Uh, I, I went down the cheesy approach, like um, like uh, something to do with rain. 
like rain is a good thing by Luke <laughs> Bryan or... Uh, when it rains, it pours, yeah, Luke Combs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. But I thought, no, nah, we won't do that. Um, yeah. I was listening the, the other day, um, Jason Aldean. Mm-hmm. It's either him, who's the other guy? Does he do God's Country? No, that's Blake Shelton. Okay, so... In, I, went, it, I went to his bar in uh, Vegas, man. Really oh, good. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do a whole debrief on your trip it, maybe next week in mm-hmm. the next podcast, eh? Um, but, yeah, so Blake Shelton and Jason Aldean, I've got songs of both of theirs that I want to nominate over the coming weeks. But that that God's Country, that mm-hmm. one, um, it, it's, it sound, it, like, it's, got, it's not a religious song, don't worry. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a, oh, I don't know how to explain it. The whole genre of, of that song is it's like a tough country. I don't know. Cause you've got different, different genres. You've got bro country. Then you got yeah, all yeah. these other ones. Like it's like a, I don't know. It's just a real, like, like a pump up sort of song, you know? And because I was listening to that on the drive down, I'm like, oh man, this is a really good song. And this is like, it's a, like a tough country song, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to do, yeah, Blake Shelton. God's country. God's country. Send it. It's a very cool song. I need to get more country stuff in. I've been doing a few wobbly ones recently. <laughs> a bit of Sierra. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that, which is nothing wrong with that. But got to throw the Aussies in your mind. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. But so, uh, um, no, I want more country in there. So I reckon um, I was going to go with. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do these ones. I, I've got a couple that because I, I went and saw Laney Wilson at the Grand Ole Opry yeah. in, in, in the states, and uh, and then I saw uh, Chris Young in uh, in Sydney. So yep. I got a couple from them that I, I want to throw on, but. Maybe uh, this week, though, we'll just go with uh, um, Hardy. Uh, Hardy? Yeah, yeah. Quit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hardy's what he does, Rednecker? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. I'm going to nominate that song as well. <laughs> <laughs> but which one's – yeah, Redneck is like so, one of the best songs ever. So Quit, it's, it's – Quit, tell me about that. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I know it. Uh, basically, he was playing for tips at a place and uh, fell up, uh, threw a napkin in the tip jar and he, when he pulled it out at the end of his set, he looked at it and said, uh, um, just quit or you should quit or something like that. And uh, so he's been holding on to it forever and then he wrote the song called Quit and he just did a... Based know, on a true story? Yeah, yeah, true story. Oh, yeah. Epic, and, 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 epic. He, and he just And the reason I've got it now, uh, I've just brought it up, was because he's just uh, did a, uh, like, you know, they did a country uh, crossroads. So he, that where, where they basically, like, uh, Taylor Swift did one with, like, um, uh, Def Leppard, you know, where, where they sing each other's songs oh, together. Yeah. okay, yep. So he just did that, but he did it with um, Nickelback and they did that song with Nickelback, yeah. Yeah, radio. I might yeah. have seen this on TikTok. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, radio. All right, we'll send it. Send it. Oh, what should we? Oh, hang on. Wait. Before we finish up, we have got some other good news. Just give me one second. One second. Well, while Ash is out and about, I'm going to uh, entertain us so I don't have to do any cutting in the in the uh, editing. So I'm uh, the uh, yeah. It's it's good to be here. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're still listening. Um, this second part of the show has gone for 48 minutes so far. We did have a battery issue earlier with the camera, so we, we, might, we might be around the 60-minute the mark. Oh, you might as well chuck us them T-shirts, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, do it. Got to get paid. Thanks, Bruss. All right, show and tell. I think we're going to add show and tell as a segment, are we? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me go first. Yeah, yeah, I got my two in the car, but yeah, yeah. All right, so um, yeah, we've got guys in the golf. That's the back. Short sleeve polo. It's got the NT colours on it, the part of the NT flag there with the flower and the Southern Cross. Oh, crikey, almost lost the microphone. There's the front there. We're going to have them uh, on my website, mikeycunningham.com.au. And then the second one, which I think is going to be very popular, which I dropped, you picked up for me, thank you. We have the 24-hour massage shirt <laughs> with the mad mullet. The maddest <laughs> mullet of them all. That story was born here. That story was born here on the podcast. And, yeah, so he's on the front as well. People have been screaming at me for Mad Mullet merch, so I've uh, organised with Mullet that we're starting off with that. We'll we'll come up with a few more things in the future, but we have, uh, yeah, the 24-hour massage shirt. It actually, I've already got stubby holders as well for the 24-hour massage as well. So that's my show and tell done. And then, yeah, we got, Ash got some uh, mail time. 
Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, one of the best things to come back to, mate, was uh, apart from all the water and mud and rubbish and crap everywhere, I, uh, I did have some mail sitting on the counter for me at home when I got back. And uh, this is uh, – we, we did speak about these guys a little while back when we had uh, Trent on. But, um, yeah, the guys from um, Adrenaline Outdoors, they, uh, they import these uh, Jabba's fishing rods. They're the Australian distributor. And uh, then boys sent us a couple of rods to try out. So, uh, yeah, they're very compact um, uh, travel rods. Very high quality, though. They're not like a normal two- or three-piece rod. They're, they're uh, five-piece rods. But, you know, jump on their website, have a look, or jump on their Facebook page, have a look, um, you know, or jump on uh, uh, Rod and Rifle Tackle World. Catherine, uh, they've got some videos on there using this gear out here around the islands. You know, this one, is this is the Wonderlust. So this one here, you, it's actually got a, uh, a butt extension, so you can uh, put the butt extension in there, use it for jigging, where, for, you know, goldies and, and uh, redfish and dewfish, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then you can also use it for flicking for barra and that as well. Yeah. And so, so in that tiny case is a high-end five-piece rod. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, they are really, really nice gear. All Fuji Fuji components, yeah, but super, super slick. They, they just they, they look the part, they feel the part. We haven't been able to get, get out in the water and give them a go ourselves personally yet, but I know um, a lot of great reviews from a lot of people yeah. that I really respect uh, in the fishing industry yeah. up here in the Territory that do use them. So they've sent, they've sent us four. You've, yeah. you, you've got two, I've got two. We've got, I've got two, ba- uh, we've got two bait casters and two spinners. Yeah, so um, they sent yeah, a, ba- a bait caster each and a spinner each, so um, spin rod each. And they've got cool names as well. What's that one? Yeah, so... Uh, what does it say on the back there? The this one's the Beast Flogger. Beast Flogger. Yeah, so that's, this one's the Wanderlust, yeah. which is the, uh, the uh, baitcaster version of it. And, uh, yeah, that one's the Beast Flogger. So yeah. uh, You'll have you'll, to stay tuned. We'll get out on the water we'll, and start using them. And we'll, uh, we'll get some videos and stuff. And, and if you like them too, guys, we did mention it uh, previously. If you've got any fishing yarns you want to tell us, send us in a fishing yarn. Um, if you can do a quick video, even if it's video, be better. But um, if you can do record in uh, reasonably high quality uh, a voice recording, yeah, yeah, on your phone um, and send us a voice recording of a yarn. Could be anything. It could be a PB catch, your biggest barra, whatever whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even have to be from up here. Could be from down south. Doesn't matter. We're going to pick one a week. Um, if you send us, start sending some through, we're going to pick one a week. These guys are going to give you $50 off um, something or $50 credit in their uh, online store so you can put it towards buying one of these rods. Yeah, they do lures and stuff as well. All, all sorts of stuff. So, um, you know, and, and it's good quality gear. Um, in my last video, Mullet was smashing the um, the tuna on that, the jig, the jig that you usually drop and flutter down. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. we just had it rigged up. So Mullet was casting into schools of tuna and smashing it with that, uh, was it Moxie or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mox- um, Moxie Sparkle, I think yeah, that was. The one, yeah. yeah. So um, th- then boys were trialing that here when we had Trent on the podcast a couple yeah. episodes back. Um, they were just trialing them uh, them new style jigs. So so uh, yeah, get on their store and have a look at that. And um, yeah, if you've got any yarns, please record them, send them in to us. You know, um, you know, don't stress too much about it. we can we can tidy them up a bit if they're not one hundred percent. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we won't make you look like an idiot. No, no, for sure. And then uh, yeah, you can get fifty bucks off their store. So um, get amongst it. Right. Well, the pub's open, mate. The uh, new staff have, uh, are down there, mate. So uh, we haven't met them yet, so we've got to go down there. Go down there. Mm. All right. Right. Shut it down, brass. Shut it down, brass. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Guides in the Gulf.